Okay, not too long ago, I did a quick look at this, the Tropic Feel Nest Backpack. Now this thing is advertised and they pride this on being able to go from 16 liters all the way up to 30 liters in order for you to go from like a daily commute or like working at the coffee shop to a weekend trip. So with all of that being said, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so when it came to testing out this bag, I tried it a couple times as like an EDC for part of the week, going to my coffee shop, and then I converted it to the 30 liter expansion that they have and took it on a little weekend getaway. Now, what I will say up top is that the way to get the expansion all the way from 16 liters to 30 liters is by not only purchasing their accessory here, which is their smart 10 liter packing cube, but it's also using what they call a kangaroo pouch here at the bottom, all of which I'm going to get into. Okay, so let's go over some of the materials and the hardware on this bag. The Nest is 100% vegan, made with maximum durability and minimum impact materials. It's 100% CO2 neutral certified and 48% recycled polyester on the outside. So it's a little difficult to find all of the hardware and exactly what the material is on this bag on Tropic Feel's website, but with this being 48% recycled polyester, it there are no weather guard zips, but there are some little like rain protection flies over the zippers, which isn't terrible. I would wager that these are YKK zippers. They feel really good. They also have really solid zipper pulls that I think do a fantastic job. They're minimal, but just big enough to where the zippers come together that they're easy to find and also easy to rip and grip. Now, when it comes to the straps and handles on this bag, the straps here are minimally thin, and that is one thing to definitely keep in mind if you plan on trying to utilize this bag for that 30 liter weekend trip. If you pack out this bag pretty heavy, there are no load lifters, there are no waist straps, and overall these straps are pretty minimum. I would say that this bag is definitely geared more towards that 16 liter range when it's in day pack mode, because otherwise, again, I just don't trust these straps too much. They're not very beefy, and they're very thin with very minimum padding. But what you do get with that is a nice sternum strap that's easy to adjust, which I always like. It slides up and down. That's always a plus and you also have a nice back channel. Now, I think this back channel is great. It has been in the 90s here where I live, so taking this and walking to the coffee shop because it's not super far, I honestly didn't have too much of a problem with the back comfort or the breathability back there as well. So both of those were really solid. On top of that, if you wanted to use this as a carry-on, there is a luggage pass-through here as well. So let's talk about handles on this bag. You have one handle up here at the top, which isn't bad, definitely nice, stands out from the top of the bag, so it's easy to find and easy to get your hand around. Minimum padding, but it does a very good job of blending with the aesthetic and the look of this bag. Now this is where my first complaint comes in with this bag. This is the only place to grab it on this bag. There are no side handles and there's nothing underneath. And even if there was, if you're using this kangaroo pouch, it would be covered. I think on a bag like this, I would like to have another spot, maybe on the side, in order to grab it because only having one handle and then there's just the straps on the back in order to grab or pick up this bag isn't always my personal favorite. This is also me wearing the bag. Now for reference, I am 5'8", 170 pounds. It's not a bad bag. Again, this is the fully packed out version. So at 30 liters, now this is what it looks like in just regular 16 liter mode with no attachments on the outside on my frame. Again, a very nice bag that I think works really well on any body. Okay, so with that being said, let's go over all the pockets on this bag, starting with the one here at the back. Like a lot of bags lately these days, this has what they call a security pocket for their passport, wallet, any kind of secured items that you'd want up against your bag and maybe have a little extra security. You're not gonna get much in here. It is just big enough to fit a passport and it fits about what my hand is lengthwise. So great spot if you wanted to put boarding passes and you're paranoid about losing them like I am, or your passport or wallet all go great in this security pocket. Now, in terms of side pockets, you do get a water bottle pocket here on the side. However, comma, I will say this is a pretty tight water bottle pocket. Actually so tight that I'm not putting my water bottle in it. My water bottle is actually in another part of the bag that if you don't like water bottle pockets on the inside of the bag, I get you, I hear you. But before you click off, because this is a tight water bottle pocket, just hear me out because the next compartment I'm gonna go over might change your mind. So just if that's, I know I get comments, so just wait one second of your time. 
please. But in terms of a water bottle pocket, like I said, it's very thin. If you wanted to fit like a normal water bottle that has like some give to it, you easily could, but any like firm water bottles, it's gonna be hard to get in here. So what I did is I chose to put my tripod because I usually bring some kind of mobile filmmaking gear or like a mount for my phone to do like little stuff when I'm on the go. But again, a very tight water bottle pocket, but not bad and does a good job of staying nice up against the bag when you're not using it. Now that other pocket that I'm talking about is on the other side, which on both sides, I will say you get these nice compression straps. You get two on this side of the bag and then one on that water bottle side if you wanna maybe tighten it up or if you wanted to strap something to the outside, like maybe a taller tripod or maybe like a stand for your computer, like a neck stand or something, you easily could with those. Now this pocket underneath is something that mirrors like a quick access on a camera bag. It gives you access to the main compartment of the bag. However, this main compartment portion of the bag is actually separated by a pop-up divider, similar to what you might've seen in the Wander Duo Pack card up here. If you're interested in something similar that functions like this, that is another bag that is a great representation and example of how this works. So it's a nice like foam compartment, which I will show you on the inside here momentarily, that keeps stuff separate from the bag. And it also has like an internal casing. So this is where I've been putting my water bottle. Now this is a normal like 28 ounce water bottle and I couldn't get it in that water bottle pocket comfortably. However, in this pocket, it does a really good job of sliding in there. You can put anything you want. This could also be where maybe you wanna put some more sensitive or fragile items, but you also get this nice liner which is water resistant and water repellent. So if you did wanna put a water bottle or something that might leak in there, it would be protected or you can take this out and fold that compartment down for more internal space or you can take this out and just use it however you want. Tropic Field does sell a variety of accessories that work in compatibility with this bag, things like camera cubes and so forth. So you could modify this without having to buy one of those accessories, but if you wanted to just not risk it, you could just fold this down and buy one of their inserts. But either way, I do like this pocket. I think it comes in handy. I think it works really well as a water bottle pocket. It also just works as a pocket to put extra things in that you might wanna just keep separated, but have quick access to. This just does a good job of allowing that. Okay, moving on to some of the other spots on this bag. Let's talk about the kangaroo pouch first. So this actually folds away on the bottom of the bag and clips to these two attachment points here. Now you could put a variety of things, but for the sake of this weekend trip, I wanted to test this thing to its full ability. So I decided to use this for an extra pair of suave shoes. These are really nice, thin, packable shoes that would do a good job. You could easily fit like regular tennis shoes in here if you wanted to, but I like to just go that extra thin route. Now, if you're not using this pouch, it actually does a pretty good job of just folding away into this bottom compartment, which then you just simply zip or close. And then if you don't want it, it's completely out of the way. It just adds more cushioning to the bottom of the bag for extra like laptop security or any items you might have in there. And then if you want it, you can unzip it, throw it in here and attach it. You can use that for a variety of things, but easy out of the way when you don't need it. The next thing we're gonna talk about is this front spot. Now this is another little attachment. So there's two attachments here. Now this gets pretty tight as you can see. It's not always the easiest because in here is where you get 10 liters of expansion. So it's 16 liters in total. This kangaroo pouch adds like four to five roughly. And then this smart packing cube, which is a Tropic Feel accessory, adds that extra 10 liters that gives you a total 30 liters. So if you don't have this specific packing cube, you don't get the exact 30 liters. However, I will say if you had a packing cube roughly of this shape and size, you could still utilize this little stretchy compartment here to put the packing cube. This is a great addition because not only do you have this spot, which works with this, which is very stretchy and gives you some give, but then on top of that, you have a front flap. So even if you had something small, or thin in here, you would still have the ability to put something additional here as well. This is a great compartment, and if you're not using anything in the front, I feel like it does a good job of just kind of blending seamlessly into the bag. If you wanted to take a jacket with you when it gets colder, this would be a great spot to slot it so you have easy access and you wouldn't have it dangling off the side. It would be nice and secure right here. So let's talk about the 10 liter Smart Packing Cube. A couple of things to mention up top. One, you do have some lash points, so you could technically lash this or clip this onto things that way if you wanted to. 
also a handle here on the back, which is nice. I like packing cubes that have handles because sometimes, depending on how you're using them, this handle can come in handy. Other thing is this does have a compression capability. So you could pack this oh, probably a little bit heavier than the loadout I'm gonna show you and still be able to get this nice slimmer shape by using this compression function. Another thing I will say about the compression is if you don't have this compressed as small as possible, putting it on the front of the bag isn't the best because it's pretty wide, it's pretty bulky, and it's pretty hard to fit in there and pull out and put in easily. So for the loadout, it unzips and does this nice book opening. Now, why I like this packing cube and why I really enjoyed using it is a couple reasons. One, you have one side for small items and another side for bigger items. On top of that, you also get this hook, which is super handy because you get the ability to not only hang this up when you get to where you're going, but also makes it really easy to see everything you have inside of here without having to dig through, rummage through, or pull items out on top to get to the items down below. So when it comes to the two mesh guys, I do one as undies and one as socks. Now these are a little bit smaller, a little bit of dimension, so you could fit some larger items in there if you wanted to. But I feel like this compartment over here does a really good job of putting your larger items. You have these little elastic bits all throughout of here. So if you're rolling your clothes, which you should be to avoid wrinkling and maybe also using Western Rise, discount code OD, 15% off, you can easily fit your rolled up shirts or even rolled up shorts. I have a pair of athletic shorts, three Western Rise Marina World t-shirts, and a pair of shorts. Right now, because it's summer, it does make it easier to pack this out a little bit lighter, but in the winter months, colder months, when you might need to bring thicker clothing, then you might run into some problems with packing a lot in this packing cube because you're not gonna have a ton of room. On top of that, you also get this elastic straps here on the flaps. So if you wanted to keep something secured over here, then you easily could. Overall, this is a really simple but yet effective packing cube that keeps your wardrobe pretty organized. So moving on to the next part would be this quick access up here. So this is where you're gonna be putting, or what I like to call a security dump. So this is where you'd put something like your wallet. I put easy access to my Apple AirPods, and then car keys if you needed them. So any kind of quick access items, also sunglasses would work in here because this is soft line, which is nice if you wanted to do that. This is a pocket that does eat up some of the dimension on the inside of the bag, so that's something to keep in mind. That's why I wouldn't want to put anything that's super crushable in here and keeping it simple with just the items that I would need the quickest access to, hence the name quick access. I just realized I just, they then explained, quick access pocket. Moving on. So we're gonna open this bag and show you the inside. So this rain flap kind of peels away, gives you the ability to do almost a full and complete clam shell opening. So you have main compartment and then some organization here. So in these organization bits, you have one pocket down here that is not see-through that I just didn't put anything in. It's a little smaller, a little bit thinner, but there if you want it. This next bigger mesh pocket is where I put my personal like wireless charging bank and then an extra quick to get to iPhone, Apple charger. All of my devices take this when I'm on the go for the most part. So it's easier just to have one cable and just hopefully, you know, if I need it, it's there. This is a great pocket with a little bit of dimension to fit some items that you might want some quicker access to when in transit. Then the two pockets up here, one of which I just ended up keeping empty because there just wasn't much that I'd put in there. I'm more of a pouch person. But in this other one, this is where I put the items that I would want the quick access to when I'm out and about. So things like specific eye drops for my contacts, teeth picks in case I'm eating food, and then also where I like to keep, because I put it in every bag that I'm using, my Apple AirTag so nobody can steal precious cargo from me. Now, next to these two little zipper mesh guys is this. Now, this is a button that unsnaps. If you buy, I believe it is the packing cube accessory, this is one of the ways it attaches. So this, you could realistically put stuff here, I guess, if you wanted to, but mostly this is for a different attachment that Tropics Feel sells for this bag. Now, on the main compartment, there's not much to it. Like I said, I took this on a weekend trip, so I had my... Uh, gravel mini toiletry kit, and then my wandered medium tech kit. This is also where I would put 
my DJI Pocket 2, which I take with me on all my trips, which is currently being used as a second camera right now while I'm filming. So that's the only thing that would be missing out of this, but hard drives, cables, things like that. And then my Western Rise Versa hat, because I mean, this thing is great to travel with. And then just a hoodie, because I always like to travel with a hoodie. You never know when you might get cold. And that is really all I had in this main compartment. Again, because we use this for the packing cube, it does free up the entire main compartment for whatever you might want. Now, this right here is where that outside pocket that I was talking about comes into place. So this is the protection on it. Now, if you don't wanna use it, it just folds away super easy. Nice tab here, pop it back up. So this could be a great little shelf, which is how I kinda like to run it, or again, you could have full access. Some larger camera cubes or just some camera cubes in general would fit in here. You wouldn't necessarily have to use Tropic Feels, but theirs does integrate a lot better with the bag as you would expect a product made for a bag would. But if you maybe are on a little bit of a budget because this bag comes in around $200 without an accessory, that would also be an option. But I think that this little bump out, little extra protection, little extra compartment, little extra organization does a good job. Okay, and the last compartment on this bag that we have not talked about is the laptop sleep. Now this is actually the only zipper and I apologize for the misinformation that actually has a weather guard seal, which is pretty nice. It fits up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro in here. I currently have a 15 inch MacBook Pro. This is a nice laptop compartment. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the bag. It gives you a little extra cushion up against the bag or the back of the bag, I should say, up against your back. That gives you a little bit more of like a sturdy frame to up and go up against. And honestly, just overall, very solid laptop compartment. I like that it's a 16 inch MacBook Pro, easily fit those 13, 14 and 15 inches in this bad boy. So to bring us to the end of the Tropic Feel Nest journey that we just went on, it's a pretty solid bag. I gotta admit, when I did my initial first look at this bag, I said that I had some concerns with Tropic Feel because I batched one of their original Kickstarters for their shoes and I just didn't like them that much. So when I found out that not only had they continued to make a ton of footwear and clothing products, but they also have like five different backpacks, I knew it was time to check one of them out. And honestly, I gotta say, I was not disappointed in the slightest. My only big gripes about this bag would be one, I wish there was more handles, and two, I wish that the main compartment was a little bit easier to open. I didn't really go over it, but sometimes trying to open this when it's fully packed out with this little rain flap can be a little challenging. It gets a little stuck, it gets a little hard to kind of pull these zippers and open the bag. So I kind of wish that maybe instead of this flap, it was just like a weather guard seal. That would make me pretty happy, but overall, not a lot to complain about on this bag. I think if you're looking for something that can work as an EDC, to commute, to go to the coffee shop, to work, whatever it might be, but then you're like, oh, well, I'm going downtown or downtown to stay the night for two nights, because maybe you're just like you're downtown that much, or you're going somewhere for like one to two nights and you don't really wanna bust out like a 40 liter travel bag and you can pack light, I think this is a great way to do that. And I really enjoyed doing that during my testing phase of this bag. So with all of that being said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Tropic Field Nest, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer those for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all of that wonderful nonsense. And thank you guys again so very much for all the love and support you continue to give this channel, it means the absolute world to me. And with all of that being said, I will see you next time.